Hello and welcome back to the DIY hosting of an email server video series. This video picks up directly where the last video ended, which is two thirds of the way through configuring our email server to use server name identification to allow for multiple domains on the same IP address. As this video is a direct continuation on the last, we'll jump straight back in and head over to my desktop. But before we do, of course, I'd like to mention my Patreon account. You know the drill, please do check it out if you find my work helpful, need a hand, or want access to my videos early. Okay, let's crack on over to my desktop. Okay, so I'm going to SSH into my Raspberry Pi as I normally do using my SSH alias Pi 4. There we go. So, so far we've set up Postfix for server name identification by changing how we define the keys and certificates for the domains in the previous video. Next, we need to do something similar, but for Dovecot. We're going to do that by editing the Dovecot's SSL config file. So let's do that using our nano text editor as we normally do. So do as I do, sudo nano slash etc slash dovecot slash conf d slash 10 hyphen ssl dot conf. Incidentally, I'm not sure I ever mentioned this before, but the number before the config file is simply there because dovecot wants to tell you the order in which the configuration files are applied. And when you get into the nitty gritty of dovecot, if you want to do something a bit more bespoke, uh, it's very important to know what order they're applied in. So that's what the number's for, if ever you've wondered why the Dovecot configuration files have these numbers. Okay, so with that entered in, let's press enter and go into Nano. Right. Now, in the previous video, I mentioned that many of the config files you'll see in these bonus videos may be a bit different to what you have in yours. This is because in these bonus videos, I'm showing you my live email server settings and therefore it is already configured. I'm not doing it on the fly in the video, which is a little different to how the course has been run so far. So in this example, you can see in the SSL config file, I have a few extra lines that you don't have. You will already have the SSL cert and SSL key, these two um, lines, as they were set up as part of this video series to provide TLS encryption on your emails. Now that we're looking to host multiple domains, however, we're going to have to be a little bit more explicit and show Dovecot exactly where the key and certificates are for each domain we are hosting. So you can see here, I've got two blocks of settings beneath. Each one contains local underscore name, followed by the domain for the email server, uh, which owing to our DNS settings will be mail dot, followed by your domain, um, just here, for the server, uh, we, and then inside curly brackets, you've got the SSL underscore cert and SSL underscore key lines, exactly the same as above, but pointing to the appropriate key and certificate file. So for single entity, it's going to be etc let's encrypt live mail dot single hyphen entity dot com. And for the utilize me email address, or um, domain, uh, it's going to be etc let's encrypt live mail dot me dot com. Okay, so what you need to do is to make sure you have your file looking just like this. Even if you only have one domain at the moment, I recommend you update this file into this format and make a comment that this is where you need to add additional keys and certificates if you add more domains. Okay, so now that we've done that, assuming you have done that and you've made the changes so that you've added these blocks, as many as you have domains, we can save the content with Control O in the nanotext editor, if I have focus, there we go. Uh, and then we can restart our Dovecot service. So sudo service Dovecot restart, press enter. As ever, it's a good idea to check that the server is running as it should by replacing restart with status and press enter. And there we go, we're, we've got it working. 
Uh, incidentally, now that I've seen this, um, it's almost impossible for you to have an email server and not have somebody try to hack into it. So with Dovecot, you will often see authentication failure appearing. And this is basically people trying to hack the account. For example, somebody at uh, 2212.70.something is trying out my email server at oliver at, I mean, there's no oliver at single-entity.com, but somebody's trying their luck. So you will always get these, don't worry. It does make debugging a little tricky sometimes, but this is quite okay. All right, you're finished. This was one of my shortest videos ever. So SNI is now ready to go on your Raspberry Pi. This won't have affected your existing domain if you've made these changes. So long as your certificate and key exists and are valid and in the right place, you'll be all set as you were before. So in the next video, we'll be taking our first step towards having virtual mailboxes, which will allow us to really exploit what we've done here with the SNI configuration. There will be a few videos on this subject as it's a little intensive or extensive, um, and I'll be going slowly to make sure we don't make any mistakes. If you found this useful, please do like this video and do subscribe to my channel. It's a great way of showing appreciation and please do check out my Patreon account. Okay, thanks again, and I will see you in the next video.